Hello, nice people. I'm just back from a two weeks vacation visiting my parents in Bulgaria, where I'm from. I had a really good time with lots of mild hiking, evading the rain in the mountains and epic views from various rocks and cliffs. It was beautiful and inspiring. So I thought I'd share some of that with you. I had an early flight and arrived in Sofia around 11 and my father picked me up from the airport. On the way to my hometown there is an old historical fortress that we wanted to stop at many times when driving by but the time was never convenient, however this time everything finally aligned perfectly so we made the detour. As we were arriving there was a bus full of school children just leaving and when we were ready to leave another one arrived. So so we managed to be there at the absolute perfect time and had the whole thing all to ourselves. Amazing! It's a pretty small fortress and not much is left of it, but I love old ruins so I was definitely quite happy with it. In ancient and medieval times the fortress was guarding the mountain pass Trians Gate and in the year 986 the Bulgarian defenders whooped some Byzantine ass in an epic medieval battle. But don't worry, a few years later the Byzantines got back at us and they were really mean about it, as one did back then, I guess. We considered also going to see some waterfalls in the area, but there were quite a lot of stormy clouds over the mountains and we could even hear some distant thunder, so we decided against it. We stopped by my grandma's too and when we finally got home I had an early night because I got up at 4am that day and was quite ready to check out. And that's also when the storm that was chasing us all day finally hit. That was cozy. The next day we walked around the center a little bit and had fancy ice cream that I forgot to film along with everything else we ate because I was too much in the moment I guess. And then it rained again. The next few days we mostly stayed in my hometown. My mom and I took some long walks around the neighborhood as I like to do and I challenged myself to take some aesthetic shots which was hard because I don't find urban environments that inspiring. Back when I lived here we also still had a lot more nature but now it's high-rise buildings filling up every bit of space. I was happy to still be able to hear the crickets in what remains of the fields and wilder areas. I also found the side of old Komi blocks peeking behind trees and tall grass weirdly beautiful in a melancholic post-apocalyptic kind of way. Also I was surprised that the older blocks somehow bothered me less than the new ones. I guess it's because they're smaller and have always been there since I was a kid and those new ones stole all the beautiful green fields I used to play in as a kid. I never found my neighborhood beautiful growing up and I still don't, but I appreciate the amount of greenery that somehow still survives and is allowed to exist in its wild state. You never see this in Denmark where everything is trimmed and shaped and cultivated. An unexpected treat was discovering that the fields that remained were filled with fireflies in the evening. I don't remember seeing that even when I was a kid. I've honestly never seen this many fireflies before and it was absolutely magical. I did my best to try and capture them but I don't know much about shooting in low light conditions and the lack of tripod was very much felt too. Then we finally got to the hiking part. My father and I took a day trip to the mountains and first we went to see a cave named after Snow White, the fairy tale heroine, because one of the formations inside was said to look like Snow White surrounded by the seven dwarfs. Besides that, there were all the usual cool cave trappings of stalactites, stalagmites and columns. 
fun weirdly shaped rocks and some caveman pottery and such. And then I climbed some tree stumps outside while my father was making small talk with the cave keeper because that seemed more interesting and mature, I guess. We then had lunch at a very nice village pub and just as we were about to embark on the next hike, we got stuck in the car to wait out quick little summer storm. Yeah, that would become something of a team. We walked down by this little stream to see some waterfalls that we actually visited last November but wanted to come again because back then the path to the waterfalls was still under construction and we had to do some really sketchy manures to get there. However, it wasn't meant to be as the rain came back and we had to hide in a very conveniently placed shelter just across the stream from us. Bulgarians just love to build those memorial water fountains, shelter, barbecue spots over the mountains and I'm glad we do. It's a very neat feature. It's wholesome to see something made purely to be useful to others and not for any kind of profit. This time the rain went on for a while and it was getting later so it soon became clear we won't be making it to the waterfalls. Even if it was earlier the area was quite steep and now probably covered in mud. It's a pity because I would have loved to see the place in early summer covered in lush greenery and probably with a smaller chance of encountering bears. It was a real concern last time we went. On the other hand, being stuck in the rain under a roof with a beautiful mountain view was quite cozy and felt like a little adventure, so I don't regret it at all. Once the rain subsided a bit, we ran back to the car, but of course it got more intense again before we made it to the next roof. Well, it was still May and the weather changes very quickly in the mountains, so one can't be too surprised, I guess. The next day we stayed in town and I used the time to put together a quick sticker sheet using some older illustrations of mine. The theme was hiking, camping and mountains of course because I was utterly inspired by, well, being in the mountains. At the time I'm editing this video I actually got the completed sticker sheet in the mail and even had the time to add it to the shop so if you've been inspired too and looking for more of that vibe in your life, follow the link in the description and get a copy for yourself. It also helps support me as an artist and a nature lover. And then we were off to the next adventure. This time we headed to a different mountain that we are less familiar with. I guess the name would translate to Middle Mountain. On the way we stopped to check out this abandoned marble quarry where a beautiful turquoise lake had formed at the base and it was neat. We stopped at the village for directions and then got to the hike. It was a pretty chill and easy one just how we liked them. It was exciting for me to notice that every place we went the nature looked slightly different. The plants would vary from place to place and compared to the plants I encounter in Denmark there is so much more variety. Which makes sense since the climate is a lot nicer over here and the soils are much richer. I've forgotten how lush nature can be. I tend to come visit in late summer and autumn when the tickets are cheaper and most plants have withered away. But I think I need to start coming in early summer more because I've been missing out on so much. The downside, much more bugs and mosquitoes. After the hike we had a dinner at the nearby village and a short walk around. 
I loved this little village. It was so quiet and peaceful with lots of very old and beautiful houses. Even if some were a little ruined at this point, I'm definitely putting it on my list of cute villages I'd consider moving to if I had any money to buy any kind of property and could just work online. We then took another short hike just outside the village. At this point it was starting to get dark, but it was a very quick walk and it was worth the detour, I think. The trail led to some interesting rocks and beautiful view over the mountains. A perfect spot for a sunrise. The place was used for ritual purposes by the ancient Thracians. The Thracians were some of the northern neighbors of the ancient Greeks and they loved mountains, interesting large rock formations and epic views. So we are probably related. The day after we went back to our usual mountains, the Rhodopi and to a village whose name would translate to where the mountains are flat. And they weren't kidding when they named it. It sits on an open semi-leveled large area covered in lush meadows and beautiful views to the surrounding mountain peaks. Whichever way you turn. Clearly another contender for the location of my dream house in the mountains. This hike was incredibly chill since it was mostly flat and the views were amazing. Some dark clouds on the horizon kept us in suspense the entire time though and my parents are annoyingly responsible when it comes to mountain safety so the walk almost didn't happen. Luckily we made it to the viewing spot atop some fun cliffs and enjoyed the view. Except for my mom, she is afraid of heights so she hung back picking some wild thyme. I don't know about you, but I'm getting Lord of the Rings vibes from this place. It would also make for a really nice sunrise watching spot. I wish I could watch the sunrise from here sometime. I wish I had a place like this where I live. I wish I lived near places like that. Then we walked down to another similar spot. The view here was only slightly less epic, but still amazing. And the next day we went to yet another mountain area. We used to come here often on vacations when I was a kid. I loved just sitting and relaxing with the beautiful view and dreaming of a life in the mountains, as I always do. If you love mountains and hiking too, don't forget to check out my new stickers. Maybe they're just what you need to decorate your camping mug or travel journal or whatever people who are more hardcore use. The day after that, we decided to go to an area that we used to go to every summer when I was a kid. 
I have some of the best memories from this place, but we haven't been here in many years. Unfortunately, the place was unrecognizable. Now it is all huge hotels and large private houses and Airbnbs and restaurants and not forests. This is what the place used to look like when I was one and a half years old and this is the year after that. This is what it looks like now. Across the road there used to be an open meadow. Now we have this. I didn't feel much on that day. I was just too sad by what this beautiful place has become, how it has been ruined by over construction and how the mountain is being sold out. There are places you can no longer walk because they're fenced and barred as a private property. It's become noisy and trash is everywhere. I might be a bit of a hypocrite because I've always dreamed of living in a little mountain house, but I'm upset by other people building on the mountain. But when I say little house, I do mean little and I don't need to fence half the forest. I wish there was a limit to how big and dense you can build and a limit to how far in the forest you can build. I wish materials like concrete were not allowed, maybe only stone and wood. I wish the rules were made by people who actually love and care about the mountain and want to keep it as unchanged as possible and that there was less space for those just looking for an investment and profit opportunities. Oh, and this is Kolo. He's my mom's friend's pirate. She was going on a vacation and left him for bird sitting. He was pretty cute. And then it was time to travel back to cold, flat old Denmark where it was like 16 degrees colder and the rain finally got me on my way back home. Ugh. Thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the highlights from my trip. I'll see you next time and until then, have fun! And as we say in my country, like and subscribe.